my lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. <laughs> um, let's get our, our weekly uh, CBA update for the people. Oh, my Lanta. Uh, uh, I, I think, honestly, I think it, it, the way the news seems to come out, it happens like right after we finish our podcast because that's just how it is. Uh, on Thursdays. Exactly. Uh, on last Thursday, they came out with that their deadline that they've set is February 28th. Um, if there's no deal by that, which is next Monday or this coming Monday, um, they're, they're, the season will end up being shortened in some capacity just because of how it's going to end up with negotiations and things. With that being said, I feel like if if that's the case, if they haven't, I know that they're making strides at least to some degree uh, in the last week. They were they came out with that they're going to be meeting every single day this week uh, to try and get something done by the twenty eighth. If it's not done by the 28th, but they've made a lot of progress, why why would it mean that they have to cancel games? Because if you're if you're really trying to say to yourself that you need enough time to get everybody up to shape, right. sign free agents, do everything else. Because like, uh, the biggest thing is not all these teams have full teams. Right, you, they still have to do, yes. You've got a ton of guys. So, like, let's say it signs on the 28th. That's opening. You're oh, talking that oh, March. Yeah. Opening day is March 31. March 1st, you're having to start signing guys. Yeah. Are you going to start? Like pra- like practice before you have a full team. No. You you yeah. could I guess. Yeah. Right? I guess you gotta. But, but it's but also the, the assumption that as soon as the doors open, everyone is signed like and, that. And also that everybody is completely healthy. Right. Like right out of the gate, and that everybody's been doing the right thing for themselves by taking advantage of their off season, and working and lifting and running and getting in shape and being in peak, peak staying on point. Yep. The reality is, is that I probably tell you thirty percent of the players are lazy enough that they haven't done very much anything. Mm-hmm. Right. They go to the gym twice a week. They throw a bullpen. They hit occasionally, but like they're not in tippy top. Mm-hmm. And it, they they rely on spring training to get them to the point that they're like, okay, I'm good. Right. But they, they, you also have older guys who the reason why they don't go as hard in the off season is they also know that they're starting to break down physically, and there's only so many bullets you have left to fly. Right. So a lot of these guys do Pilates in the off season, things like that, to keep themselves strong, flexible, in good shape. But their tissue tolerance isn't ready for the game. Mm. They use spring training to build that tolerance up so that they haven't abused themselves. They've stayed relatively strong, but they need to kind of sharpen the blade to then go play 162 games. Right. And those guys are not ready. So your older player, your guy who's, sadly to say, older player and say this, but your guy who's 28 plus is probably, you know, trying to save bullets and conserve energy. He's not in the gym hammering it away. Yep. Like, that's not what happens. Oh, you got to work hard enough. Mm -mm. At some point in time, you've worked hard enough. You getting a little bit stronger is not going to all of a sudden make you an all-star. So I, I just think that they're in a in a in a tight spot. I'd say they need at least two weeks to fill out teams rosters, right? And then they need at least four weeks to safely get everybody up to speed, right? Because if you're gonna have pitchers report, it, it takes pitchers almost two months to get geared up, right? The entirety of spring training, if you look at it from pitchers report to opening day, is roughly two weeks. Oh, uh, not two weeks, uh, six weeks. But if you look at it from like pitchers and catchers reporting is a, like a, also a mini lie. Right. Almost every pitcher like I've ever worked with who's an MLB guy shows up at least five days before pitchers and catchers report. And they also, a lot of them who have moved their training full time to Florida, mm. they've already been outside doing their bullpens and stuff. Right. They're already ramping up and like getting. So getting when they ready get to, to opening day, they've got two months of being outside throwing on a field. Right. You can't. Nobody's done it. Yeah, like they'd already have been there for two weeks. Yep, no they, shot. Maybe facing live hitters, they'd, you know, approaching like real games, yep. like all that stuff. Uh, so, what, what did we say on the last episode? We were we were thinking May thirty one <clears throat> as a as a possible if they if they were to delay I, the season. I think we said May first. May first get started. Okay, like they they could get everything popping by May first because that would give them really March and April to have another two and a half, three weeks of of talking, mm-hmm. then they could get done, sign free agents, but guys could at least start showing up to the pitchers and catchers could report. Right. Right. Those guys could start getting into it. Players wanted to start showing up, they could. But like the minor league guys are already there and, and, and working. Right. So the minor league guys are going to be a bigger component to this year's spring training than ever before because they're going to be needed to fill in a lot of the positions in games and stuff like that mm-hmm. in, in, in fielding because guys are just not going to be ready. Yeah. 
What do you think the the shortest amount of time they could get everybody ramped up and going? <clears throat> shortest time in reality or shortest time without having the early part of the season also have tremendous injury? <sighs> the happy medium? The happy medium to me is four weeks. Okay, that's what my thought was. The, well. the happy medium is four weeks because, again, if we talked about what we just said, if they signed on April 31st, and we were talking about May, May, or if they signed on on April first, and we we're talking about May first being the the time that they could start games. Mm-hmm. When they do that on April first, pitchers and catchers can report the next day. Yep, facilities are already open, so it's not like you have to wait for the facilities to get open either. Guys could literally just walk in the next day, and there's people there ready to work with them. Right. So pitchers and catchers, I think, would have to immediately report. And then my, that's why free agents free agents would then have to start working on those negotiations, and they would need to get in. Probably you'd have to sign, if you're a pitcher, you'd have to sign in the first five to seven days to be ready for the start yeah. of the year. That, that first week, I'd have to think, would be free agency mayhem. Yes, um, that first week would be free agency mayhem. And you'd, I think you're going to see a lot of golden parachutes this year where guys sign one-year deals. Okay. Um, because nobody wants to take a bite at the quick apple mm-hmm. and like say, okay, I'm just going to do it. I, I see like guy like Conforto having to take a one year deal. And I saw just, a lot of things saying that he might go back to the Mets. I don't know how he does now. I truly, I, I it, it doesn't make sense with who they already well, signed. So the only the only way I could see that is if you tr- from from this standpoint is Kana stays in right. Mm-hmm. And and Conforto goes to left or. Conforto goes to left. Technically speaking, we'd have four and a half outfielders, five outfielders five. with Dom Smith. More, yeah, it, you got Dom Smith, Kana, Nimmo, Marte, Conforto. Yeah, and Dom Smith, I guess, left field, first base, but not really first base anymore. But, sort but of. But he could play first base. Sure. He's still. But he, like he, in the in the amount of time, like the majority of his time wouldn't be spent at first base if he was playing I don't know. almost every day. Then my question becomes: Do you then have uh, Smith and Kana share some first base duty and have Pete Alonso be full time DH? I don't know. Well, oh, so that's – there you go. That's that's the answer. Don Smith's are DH. But that's why I'm saying yeah. – like, I don't think Pete's That's why I'm be... saying Dom goes out, but Kana is not as good of a defender as Nimmo. So Nimmo's yeah. got to be out there defensively. Right. Marte's got to be out there defensively. Yep. So now that means you have to play Conforto. That means you're now taking Kana's bat out of the lineup unless you're putting him at DH first base. Yeah. So somebody's got to get traded from the Mets horribly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is, again, that's part of the, I think, a lot of the stuff that's going to happen in the early part of it. Mm-hmm. But I would tell you that truly players players need six weeks. Like six weeks is a genuine thing. Right. Four weeks is, uh, hey, we need to get this done, but it's not ideal. Six weeks is really where where you're looking at. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I think the NFL it was cool with shrinking the preseason. Because mm-hmm. the reality is if training camp is four weeks long, you only really need two more weeks of. Right. If anything, you're just opening up more options yeah. for injury and yeah. stuff like that. And and you saw it last year, almost none of the starting quarterbacks in the NFL really played much. Right. You know, Josh Allen, I think, played the very last game for the first half, and then he was out. Mm-hmm. So he played two quarters of football and then went out and played a season. Now I will say, I thought that quarterback play to start the year was up and down a lot more mm-hmm. than in years past. And and I think that had to do with getting a lot of less reps against other teams. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, I think it takes six weeks for a, a professional athlete to get into the shape to play the sport at a good level. So four weeks to me is really pushing it. But they could get it done. You wouldn't mm-hmm. have like horrific stuff. But you might have a, a not a slightly above average like level yes. of play in the beginning, yep. which would make sense. And, and you're also going to have more injuries yeah well because that's the other thing too is all these guys who normally use team facilities for whatever reason training or rehab or whatever i haven't been <coughs> able to do that correct so so there's a lot of guys who pay money to get trained and there's a lot of guys who are like i don't have money to get trained right who are on the back end of a roster and are like i'm not paying a guy you know 150 dollars an hour to train me yeah i'm not paying 700 dollars a month to be in a development program where I can come in six days a week and get recovery and stuff like, nah, I use the team facilities. Yep. I, I literally seen a guy from the Tampa Bay Rays in a New York sports club. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like when I was younger training and he was in a New York sports club with a Eric Cressy program 
and he had no idea what he was doing on the program really and i used to help him uh but he only got the program because he's like i live i don't live near him Mm -hmm. he's like and i don't want to pay the money to be up there the whole time i can pay for a program i can come here and do it you know yeah cool like is what it is but I, I, that's why I think that there's going to be a lot of injuries if you don't give more time. Yeah. If you had to do it, though, you could play games in two weeks. Yeah. And, I, and I, I do have some faith that, that like at least a good amount of the <clears throat> starters are like getting their work in and different stuff. But, I mean, I, I do also at the same time see the, a lot of value in all this different things spring training offers. Um, I also think the way that kind of like the media and all like the, the different updates have been about this, I could see a world where – when this, when the, should they actually figure out how to get this CBA done in a reasonable amount of time? When it is approaching being done, I could see teams and things kind of getting the players' updates of like, hey, like, come down in the next couple of days because we're going to want to get rolling as soon as this is signed. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of like, there, there's the, the players' board and different stuff. So there's yep. obviously lots of lines of communication um, that could get this going as fast as possible. But we'll see because. Right now, there's still apparently a, a wide gap uh, between the players and the league, and uh, I'm not sure if they're going to get it done by Monday. So, I don't think like again, if I, I don't think with where they're at with a lot of the big rocks, mm-hmm. that the players' association should budge. Because one, yeah. of the, like, and you have it in our in our show notes today, right? Yes. The the competitive balance tax is a big piece of it. Yep. Um, the players want to get rid of loss of draft picks if a if a guy signs somewhere. Right. Yep. And then there's also the monetary side. The players want a 20% tax if you're over the threshold, which is the salary cap. Mm-hmm. 32% if you're 20 to 40 million dollars over. 62% tax if you're 40 plus million dollars over. The MLB wants 50, 75, 100. <laughs> so guys, what was the what's the uh, what's the line? Two fifteen. Two yeah. I think I think actually the tax is a little higher. Okay. I think the salary cap is like two fifteen. Yeah, something like that. And then I there. think that it's like the the it starts at two thirty. You start getting taxed. Like there's a buffer okay. zone between the two. Um, and that to me, the MLB has pretty much said you guys thought that you guys have an uncapped league. Yeah. And there is a cap. Yep. And we're going to make it that the richest owners in the league can't do anything about it because it's a bad business decision to cuz if you spend 215, if you spend 300, you spend roughly 400. Yeah. They don't have a salary cap. The luxury tax was two hundred and ten million last year. No, that's that's a two ten sal- is the cap. That's a salary cap. Yeah. Like you can get out of here with whatever you want to talk about two ten. Two ten is absolutely, absolutely a soft cap. Yes. It is just not a hard cap. If you because want to go over it, great, we're gonna charge you for but it. But they want to go to fifty percent for every dollar spent above it. So you spend two twenty, right? You're really spending two twenty five. Yep, we're going to charge you five million for that extra that extra bunch of money, and then once you're at two twenty, like once you're at two thirty, right? Then we're going to be seventy five percent. You're going to pay seven point five million for every ten million you spent. Mm-hmm. So two hundred and forty million dollar tax. It's two hundred forty seven point five million plus everything else that you had taxed below it. You're going to pay two sixty. Baseball lifestyle. It's my lifestyle. <laughs> 